cycle. OK, let's uh, tackle the carbon cycle. Oh, there it is. On there. So, carbon cycle is uh, by far the easiest of the two cycles because you don't need to know the names of any of the bacteria involved, unlike the nitrogen cycle, where you do. So, um, you need to know that the form in which carbon is in its inorganic form is carbon dioxide gas. in air. And like all nutrient cycles, we're going from inorganic to organic. So the way in which carbon dioxide gas in air gets into its organic form is by photosynthesis, about which we know everything. So of course that is going in in the Calvin cycle, carbon dioxide fixation. And the organisms that are mainly doing that, excuse the quality of drawing, I'll tell you what it is, is a, a green plant. Those carbon containing compounds, so what plants are actually making are sugars, lipids, uh, polysaccharides. And of course, with the addition of um, nitrogen, we can also make amino acids and proteins and nucleotides. So those require nitrates and phosphates. And then those things are passed on down food chains, so they're passed on through the trophic levels and the energy flow. So let me just draw a little mouse here. It has to be a mouse, it's the only thing I can draw. So. What else are those organisms doing with those carbon compounds? Well, they're respiring. So remember the GPP, NPP thing. So they are respiring and returning the carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. And of course, it's always a cheerful topic that everything dies. So you've also got going on here death and so these are all going off to the decomposers. And the decomposers themselves are aspiring I use yellow orange. So we've also got respiration from them returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Now these are the sort of key process in this, it's in a nice flamey colour, is that of course some of the death of these organisms may result in fossil fuel formation. in which case we're returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere by combustion. That's just a posh word for burning. And of course, you know, it's not just um, fossil fuels that we burn. You might also have some dead plant material. So, you know, all your lovely wood burners, um, they're all returning carbon dioxide to the atmosphere via combustion. in there as well. 
So that's pretty much it and it's pretty simple and you don't need to know the names of any organisms. You need to know some factors that can affect the rate of decay. So we'll just do those. So if you think about where you get sort of, you know, extreme preservation. So slow decay. Ice, which always makes me think of mammoths. And don't see the Iceman, of course. Uh, we've got acid, which makes me think of uh, bog bodies. And they're really interesting, you can look those up. And it can be very dry, in which case you get mummification. Um, and again, quite a few interesting examples of mummification in deserts and uh, <laughs> rather horribly and sort of people getting trapped in attics and chimneys. Um, yeah, you just need to watch CSI a bit really. So all those things will slow decay down. Ice obviously because the enzymes are inactivated. Acid because of denaturation of enzymes and dryness because there is no water to sustain the bacteria that would normally do the decay. And they're, they're things that you should certainly think about. Uh, the main way, of course, in which they're going to ask you about uh, carbon dioxide levels, I would have thought, is in the context of deforestation. Which is uh, destruction of forest, like it says, taking away trees, replacing them with, uh, with other things, uh, particularly an issue if you're replacing them with buildings. So the idea of deforestation and how it disrupts the carbon cycle is you get less photosynthesis, so less CO2 uptake, because you've got less plants doing it. Very often it's associated with combustion, returning more carbon dioxide. So the uh, carbon dioxide concentration builds up. And if that increases, it forms a, a layer of insulation around the planet. So light gets through. But heat can't escape. And if heat can't escape, this is going to lead to what's called the greenhouse effect. And the ultimate consequence of that is global warming. Now global warming, we can see the evidence around us. The northerly range of various species is increasing, so um, I can remember only 10, maybe 15 years ago, those very long leggedy small bodied spiders that hang around in the corners of your ceiling. Only ever saw them at my uh, mother-in-law's in the south and now they're everywhere, they're spreading up to Scotland. Uh, northerly range of birds, you know, you've got, you always see these wildlife programmes, scorpions in London, uh, and you know, that's, that's something you get quite excited about, new species arriving from the continent, now able to survive um, in Britain, um, but we don't really quite know what that's going to do to the ecological balance overall, and of course, if it gets too warm, some things are going to um, be on the verge of extinction because they're adapted to live in our lovely temperate, rainy, not very warm environment. Uh, so that's certainly, you know, you should be able to work out some of the consequences of that.